in global warming. As we see the whole landscape changing, it is really impacting our, our way of life. Can we reduce our carbon footprint to fight climate change? We're doing our bit to not rely so much on the coal-fired power stations to power what we do in our house. Are the steps we're taking really enough? CNA correspondent fighting climate change. Friday on CNA. Have fun while breaking a sweat on your next visit to Gangnam. Enjoy the weightlessness of bungee fitness or learn the health benefits of pole dancing. So don't miss the opportunity to feel the burn with the latest workout trends in Korea. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. Updating tonight's top stories, Malaysia is considering fining people who miss COVID-19 vaccination appointments. An increasing number of younger people aged between 20 and 40 are testing positive as infections hit a record high for a third straight day. China has slammed US President Joe Biden's order to double down on investigations into the origins of COVID-19. Beijing has accused Washington of politicizing the pandemic. A social media storm is brewing in India. Twitter says that its staff are being intimidated by police over handling of government tweets. The UN Human Rights Chief says Israel's recent airstrikes on Gaza might constitute war crimes. Michelle Bachelet has told a special session of the UN Human Rights Council that she hasn't seen evidence that buildings attacked were used for military purposes. At the same time, she's called on Hamas and other armed groups to stop the indiscriminate use of rockets and mortars. She says there must be accountability as Israel has the right to defend itself. Member states are meeting virtually to discuss a draft resolution proposed by a group of Muslim nations led by Pakistan. It calls for an investigation into alleged human rights abuses in the latest surge of violence. Israel has condemned both the meeting and the draft text. It says that the purpose is to blame Israel while downplaying crimes by Hamas. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is heading back to Washington after a Middle East tour aimed at consolidating a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Mr. Blinken was in Jordan for the last leg of his visit. Before that, he met President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in Egypt, which mediated the latest truce. Mr. Blinken also met both Israeli and Palestinian leaders. He's promised millions of dollars in aid to rebuild Gaza. At the same time, he's reiterated that Israel has the right to defend itself from attacks by Hamas. Securing the ceasefire was important, particularly because of the devastating toll violence took on families uh, on both sides. But we see the ceasefire not as an end, but as a beginning, something uh, to build on. Simon Marks joins us from Washington, D.C. for more on this. Simon, how much headway has Antony Blinken made in wider peace negotiations? I think there's very little expectation among foreign policy analysts here in Washington, D.C., uh, Steve, that he's made much headway in that regard for a couple of different reasons. I mean, first of all, uh, the topography of the situation has not changed. The Secretary uh, of State did indeed meet with Palestinian officials, but only those uh, from Mahmoud Abbas's inner circle in Ramallah in the West Bank. There is no communication whatsoever between the United States and Hamas, deemed as it is a terrorist organization by the US, the European Union and the state of Israel. But also in broader terms, the Biden administration has made it very clear that it doesn't really want to focus in a meaningful way uh, on the situation in the Middle East. It hasn't presented its own peace proposals uh, for the region. It still doesn't have uh, a U.S. ambassador to Israel in place. It doesn't have a senior figure at the State Department overseeing the Middle East portfolio. Uh, it's been very dismissive uh, of the Abraham Accords that were signed and sealed 
uh, under the aegis of former President Donald Trump uh, a few months ago, uh, but hasn't uh, offered yet proposals for how to take things uh, further. So uh, the concrete achievement of Antony Blinken's trip is cementing the ceasefire in place, and there's no question uh, that there are sighs of relief here in Washington that uh, a week later uh, it is still holding. But in terms of the broader long-term outlook, uh, still very difficult to see very much progress in that regard. Uh, what about uh, the issue of sort of rebuilding Gaza and funds being uh, sent in that direction? Is our Palestinians, can they expect to receive uh, help from the U.S.? Well, there definitely will be help coming. I mean, we know five and a half million dollars in emergency aid uh, that the United States immediately hopes to send to Gaza uh, largely through the offices of the United Nations. Then there's talk of another $35 uh, million uh, that will be uh, sent through the United Nations uh, Works Relief Agency. Uh, but the U.S. has made it absolutely clear uh, that it doesn't want any of that aid, any of those supplies falling into the hands of Hamas because the Biden administration is under congressional pressure uh, over the uh, millions and billions of dollars that over the years the United States has spent arming Israel. Uh, then there's violence. Gaza is reduced to rubble. Emergency aid has to be sent to Gaza to rebuild Gaza. Then more arms are sold to Israel in this kind of uh, constantly repeated cycle. And there is anxiety on Capitol Hill about that kind of continuing expenditure. So uh, there's going to be uh, some political battles to fight domestically for the Secretary of State and for President Biden uh, in that regard. Yeah, many thanks for getting us up to speed. So, Mark, speaking to us from the U.S. Capitol. Global temperatures are said to be getting closer to a climate tipping point. The UN says that the world may heat up by 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels in the next five years. And that's seen by scientists as the threshold to avoid the most catastrophic effects of climate change. UN experts believe that there is a 40% chance of that happening from this year up to 2025. Now that's up from the previous prediction of 20%. And that would push global temperatures temporarily past the limit set by the Paris Climate Accord, which is measured over a 30-year period. Last year was already one of the warmest on record, hitting 1.2 degrees above the pre-industrial baseline. It's expected to get warmer each year until 2025, and all regions will be affected. The UN says that this should be seen as yet another wake-up call for the world to slash greenhouse gas emissions. Ahead of the COP26 UN Climate Summit in November, several countries have already set goals to reach net zero carbon targets. For a closer look, we're joined now by Professor Leslie Hughes from Macquarie University. Professor Hughes, every year from 2021 through to 2025, we're likely to see at least one degree Celsius warmer. What effects will that be in terms of how we feel in our everyday lives? Well, we'll be starting to see even more extreme uh, heat waves as we have been doing in the last few years, which uh, kill um, tens of thousands of people each year. In places like where I am in Australia, we'll be starting to see even more uh, uh, bushfires, out of control bushfires as we had two summers ago, which were unprecedented. Um, the Melting of sea ice in the Arctic and the Antarctic will keep accelerating. Our oceans will keep warming. And we'll see just more frequent and more intense climate-related events that cause disaster. Professor Hughes, last year was already one of the warmest years on record, despite COVID-19 lockdowns that slow down much of the global economy. What does this say then about our, our progress in the climate crisis? 
Well, to put it bluntly, we're, we're failing. Uh, we're failing globally. Most countries are failing nationally. The pledges that countries have made to Paris, um, some of them are more ambitious than others. But collectively, we know that even if they're all met on time 100%, uh, we, the world will still head for 27 